Hi everyone, it's Scott with Dearly Departed with Scott Michael. See how that works. Uh, now today's video is about one of my favorite stories. I grew up in Detroit. I was always interested, as you know, in really weird things, mostly tragic things where people died. And one of the things that was really important that happened in Detroit, at least in my world, were the flying Willenda uh, tightrope artists and their tragic accident in 1962. It took place at the Michigan State Fairground, and we used to go every year when I was a kid. And actually, it was the only time I ever saw a real, for you know, honest to goodness, freak show. Yes, I said freak, and uh, and and so that was a really cool experience too. But anyway, the Michigan State Fair, 1962, the Flying Willendas had a tragic accident when they were doing their seven-person uh, pyramid. I love awful stories. Uh, the more fantastic, and I don't mean that in the great kind of way, but the, these fantastic stories of things that are supposed to be great end up being quite tragic. It's as uh, the whole thing behind amusement parks, I think. You get on a ride, you think you're going to die, and uh, you're cheating death. And these people, these the Flying Lendas, who are legendary performers and artists, and it really is an art, have a look around. They're still doing it, Nick Walenda in particular. And it's, it's hair-raising to watch these things happen. And so these people defy death most of the time. Ever since I was a kid, I was pretty fascinated with the flying Walendas, and I've been collecting things over the years that uh, have to do with them. Here is a first day issue stamp honoring Ringling Brothers and a photograph of uh, 1973 of Carl Walenda autographed. Uh, one of Carl's business cards. This is from their press release, their press kit stationery and labels with their address. That's one of their press kits. And that is Carl's book autograph by Carl to Mayor Richard's son, Jack Carl Walenda. And this was published in 76. And Carl died in 1978. And this is from his funeral. Now, bizarrely, on eBay, I found a collection of articles. And these items, the press kit and the funeral stuff uh, and this which was a, a personal letter to someone named John and Hazel and accumulation of clippings regarding the Willenda tragedy and Emmett Kelly who was uh, we'll talk about that and uh, this is the description of Carl Willenda's funeral at uh, Robarts Arena in Sarasota I mean of all the things to show up on eBay that had my name on it, do you know what I mean? Not literally, but uh, it's just all about Carl Walenda's funeral. And it was written to Elwood and Emily Talley, who were big in the circus community in, uh, in Sarasota. Now, the Walendas were killed, uh, two of them were killed in Detroit in 1962, and the Walendas returned to Detroit to recreate the Seven Man Pyramid. The repeat performance the world has been waiting for. And this is autographed by a whole bunch of Walendas that were there. So this was actually performed in Detroit, repeating the act that didn't happen properly in Detroit. They killed two of them. So uh, this is sort of an odd uh, thing. And I believe there's other autographs in this too. But... Uh, I used to love these buttons. Okay. <laughs> Here's buttons. Here's Chernobyl. <laughs> T-Rex. <laughs> Gumball. Cinders. This is wild. So, yeah.
But yeah, pretty cool. So these, this collection of clippings was also included in this whole batch. And these are all like original articles. And I don't know, these people saved everything. And they, they obviously were supposed to come to me because I have them. Now, bizarrely, it's not the first time the Walenda family were involved in a tragedy. Before I tell you more about the Detroit one, on July 6th, 1944, the Walendas were on the tightrope, literally on the tightrope at the Hartford Circus when the entire tent caught on fire. Now, none of the Walendas were hurt, but 168 people burned to death in that fire. Hundreds escaped with injuries and some escaped you know, unscathed. And here's another weird twist. One of the people that came out of that uh, fire unscathed became the actor Charles Nelson Riley. How is that for weird? So when I was poking around the Detroit uh, message boards on Facebook, I found a guy who was actually in the audience. He was an eyewitness to the Walenda tragedy in Detroit. So instead of me explaining what happened on the tightrope in Detroit, Joe Wager is going to do that for us. So check this out. It's a fascinating story. Hey Joe, this is Scott Michaels. How are you? I, I'm pretty good, Scott. If you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. Back when the uh, Walendas were performing at the at the Shrine Circus at the State Fair, uh, and this would have mm -hmm. been Tuesday, the 30th of January of 1962, and you were in the audience when this happened, weren't you? Yes. Myself, my dad, and two brothers. And so it was just a family outing that you were there that day. Yeah, I think the insurance agent my dad had gave him four free tickets. So it was an evening performance, like a nine o'clock performance. It was a two and a half hour show, but halfway through is when the Belendas took to the uh, wires, and they were yeah. doing their famous seven person pyramid. Do you remember that well? Oh yes, I recall one of the lower men lost his footing, which ultimately brought down the pyramid. A uh, couple of them caught the wire, including the girl, but then they came with a net or a blanket they used as a net and told her to drop into it, but they dropped it when she hit it. You know, they were trying to break the fall, and I don't know. But oh. Yeah, I remember they did drop it when she hit it. So the yeah. two, I guess it was the guy in the bottom front, uh, Dieter, I think was his name, is the one that faltered. And I think, it's, it's like with my uh, research, I'm going, I've got some old newspapers from the Detroit News, and they're saying that he, it was his first time doing that seven-person pyramid, and he started to fumble. Now, were there, I mean, were the people in the audience, how were they reacting? Were they screaming, or was there just silence, or... I'm not sure, but I would say probably more stunned silence and then probably just everybody talking at once about their, you know, the people they were with and that. So you saw them hit the ground. You heard them hit the ground. Yeah. We weren't that far away. We were right near the center ring, which is what they were performing in. How long do you think before medical personnel got there? I, I really don't recall how long it took. Uh, I mean, it was a while we had to wait before the main performance started again. It's interesting because I, I was reading one article that it said that uh, they had a priest there to, to administer last rites to the two men that fell and were killed. Oh, which is, that, yeah. that's probably true. They, I mean, they went on the next day. That's what's so amazing is they went back on the rope at the state fair the very next day. You know, it's like the show must go on. So over the years, has, that, has anyone have you told this story to other people? I, I'm just curious, oh, like yeah, how? Because I hate to say it because it's you know a tragedy, but it's probably the most significant event I was ever personally present. And I, you know, I don't remember a whole lot from my childhood in detail, but that one sticks out because it was a very notable event. Yeah. Well, thank you All very right, much, Scott. Nice talking to you. Thank you both so much. Take care of yourselves. Have a great day. You too. Here are the death certificates for Dieter Shep. Dieter was 23 years old. His death certificate lists his cause of death as massive hemothorax of the left oracle of his heart. Now, Richard Faunen, he was 29 years old, same cause of death, massive hemothorax due to tear of the left oracle of the heart. Both list on the death certificates due to fall from tight wire 32 feet. Their bodies were taken to the Burrell Lang Mandy Stewart funeral home on Fankel in Detroit. 
which is now a church. Mourners included June, the midget clown, Norbu, the human gorilla, and clowns Bozo and Blinko. Their bodies were sent back to Sarasota, where they lived, for burial. Now, before I show you where they're buried, I'm going to show you the Walenda family home in Sarasota. We are in Sarasota, Florida right now, and I was peeking at the death certificates of the two Walendas that uh, died in Detroit. And although it happened in 62, 60s, I checked out the address and thrilled to pieces to see that it's here still and thrilled to pieces that we don't have to try to do something on the fly because there's a plaque in front of the place honoring the Walendas. So we can actually take video and not be bothered, hopefully. Oh, that was a pretty busy neighborhood. But this house is, uh, is quite old, so it seems. And let's see what this says. The Willendas. After the 1928 circus season, the Willendas came to Sarasota, winter location of the Ringling Circus, rented a home. 37, Carl and Helen, who had married, purchased a home at 1623 Arlington Street. The Willendas property, which included several adjoining lots, became practice area and provided a place for their colleagues to rest and socialize. So this must be their former practice area. Willendas toured with the Ringling Circus until 46 and 47. The family founded the Traveling Willenda Circus. Thereafter, they expanded the repertoire. And from 47 to 62, their practice was a seven-person pyramid. That didn't work out well. In the late 70s, the NBC television crews descended on the Willendas home to film a movie about the Willendas. The specials, the specials, The Great Willendas, aired in February of 1978. And increased interest in the Willendas and their acts. In 78, Carl Willenda fell to his death in San Juan, Puerto Rico. While walking the high wire shortly thereafter, Helen sold the property on Arlington and moved to northeast Sarasota. The Walenda family symbolizes the idea that the show must go on, and their daring and showmanship made them one of the greatest acts in circus history. And they're not even kidding, man. They, these guys, the show must go on big time. Let's see, is this continued on the other side? Oh my gosh. They originated in Germany, where its members developed the Daring Highway or Act, and these guys. Yeah, they were intense. Early in their careers, they achieved some fame touring with different circuses in Europe. But Carl Willenda became convinced that circus operators in Europe failed to appreciate his artistry. Carl, Herman Willenda, Helen Kreiss, and Joe Greger signed with the Santo E. Artigas Circus in Cuba. In 28, John Ringling observed the Willenda's performance in Cuba and signed them to a contract with Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. First engagement with the Ringling Circus occurred at Madison Square Garden in New York City on April 5th, 1928. The troupe billed as Europe's latest sensation was honored as a solo act. The performance was a tremendous success and the Willendas became celebrities. The Willendas fame, showmanship, and daring skill ensured them a prominent place in the Ringling Circus and they continued touring with the circus during the season, which ran approximately from April to October. During the winter, the Willendas frequently performed for other circuses. So this is the Walenda home, Mr. and Mrs. Walenda purchased. Pretty cool. And you know what? There's the mailbox. I wonder if they built that garage. Well, no. I guess that would be older. They were gone by then. <laughs> oh, look at that. They even have a blue plaque up there.
America is a nice portrait of Carl Walenda. And here is Carl Walenda's grave. We're in Minnesota Memorial Park, burial ground. There's Helen. So Carl fell in uh, San Juan. And this is the Walenda family crypt, our grave. Sarasota, Florida. So the people that were involved in the Detroit uh, accident, you know, there's there's a seven pyramid thing, and uh, it fell. And Dieter actually was, they say, the guy that faltered. And he died. And Richard died. Thank you so much, Judy Wager, for setting me up with your husband, Joe. And Joe, thank you so much for your eyewitness account of the incident at the State Fair. I want to thank my brother, Rick, for letting me use the photographs of the interiors of the State Fair Coliseum. I want to thank the people who are sponsoring my page via uh, the Patreon link below or the PayPal link below, uh, especially Patty Arnett, Lori Hilton, Joe Salezzo, Mandy Fraser Campion, Daphne King, Sam Stafford, Michael Brown, Jolene Clitoris, and Ann Meyer. Uh, you're all so terrific and supportive, and I really appreciate it. Please like, please subscribe, because that's a big deal. It means something. And uh, thank you for your time and for your attention. Until next time. heard me.